Karibu sana. It's time for Entrepreneurship Tuesday, a new segment that we want, you know, to bring something different than we've ever had. Well, all along with Barry, we were talking about, you know, technology and how it's advancing. Right now, we want to take a different kink. Let's change the gear for just a minute and talk about the music business. Well, it's quite booming. Let's talk about it in Kenya. It's really taking place and pre preeminence, if we can say so. But the question is, how about artist management? This morning, I'm joined by David Guaro, who is an artist management, who began as a rapper in high school, businessman, and today he's a veteran entrepreneur. He lives in Kangwari, hailing off from the way from Homer Bay County. Welcome, David. Thank you for having me. It's nice to have you here. Pleasure. Something outstanding about you, before we even talk about anything else, is your profile. Ah. It's really outstanding. I was looking at it and I was like, man, it's like four pages. It's three. It's three, actually. Yeah. Three pages for someone, is, you're like, hey, manzai jot, manzai easy, manzai vitu zingine fani fani. These are three and detailed. I'm grateful. At least uh, mm -hmm. it's something that uh, I didn't just put it there for the sake of it. Actually, I left out a lot of stuff. Wow. Yeah, that I felt were necessary. <laughs> so, this is you should have 15 pages. It's a magazine. Or more. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's David himself, of course. He's going to introduce himself in a far much better way because many know him as a veteran entrepreneur, artist manager, you know, and a rapper himself. Uh, it's a former rapper. Yeah, I'm no longer doing it. <laughs> You're no longer doing it. No longer Why? Happy. Okay, just reached a place in my life. I just decided, okay, this rapping or music thing is not my thing. All right. So as in, uh, I just decided not to be on stage, but be behind the scenes. Okay. So now doing the business aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not just be, okay. Uh, I felt like um, it reached a point, I felt like I'm better of a kingmaker than the king himself. Wow, okay. Wisdom. So, yeah, so, uh -huh. and the, that is something that not most people realize. We mm -hmm. always push for things that we are not happy with, mm -hmm. but the fact that it's paying our bills, we just do it. And there's nothing as worse as doing something that you don't love and you're not happy with for the sake of settling your bills. I know bills are crazy in Nairobi, but I, I just said, okay, let me be behind the scene because it's not something I'm happy with, but I'm happy as an entrepreneur, but hey. more so doing music business. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do talent management and All development right. and started managing artists. All right. Before we even get to, you know, artist management, mm. you're the CEO of Hailman Entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Of which now comes all after now you being an entrepreneur in primary school, in high school, you know, Kuza Mazayadi Ngua. To primary kids and high school, manze? Yeah, I did that. I did all that. How how come at the age of thirteen you knew what business is? Okay, uh, growing up, um, what people don't know is uh, I grew up in a very tough. I had a tough bringing, like uh, the, the the extreme of poverty. Mm -hmm. Like I remember growing up in Alma Bay, and I remember I had a single. I was raised by a single mom. So growing up, I remember. There's a, there's, a, there's a small open air market in Oma Bay called Sokomjinga. Mm -hmm. So I remember growing up uh, as a little kid, uh, my mom was selling cereals in that, in that market. So I remember sometimes I would go from, uh, from school, then just sit be right beside her and I see how she's doing her thing. And I think that's, that, that's the only time I, I exposed myself or I, to entrepreneurship. I would oh. say that's the only time. So from there, I just picked it up. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I've just been building it up. Wow, that's amazing, David. And something really outstanding is the fact that you earned 10,000 yeah. in high school. Yeah, that, the, that is the highest amount I made uh, now growing up. From the, in the, within that age, mm -hmm. that is the, the, the biggest amount I've ever made. So, and the fact that I made it within a short period and uh, just purely out of entrepreneurship, Mm -hmm. uh, that was also amazing for me, and that's why I had to put it in my profile. So I remember I was I was actually a rapper back way way back in high school. Mm -hmm. I, that's where I started rapping. And uh, when we had uh, ceremonies in school, and also on Sundays when we had uh, services, mm -hmm. uh, they used to call me on stage to just entertain guys and uh, minister. And I used to be a gospel rapper then. Oh, then? Yeah, yeah, right. I used to be. So I used to minister in, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, s in the church. Mm -hmm. So after that, then uh, 
I saw the business in it. Like uh, I, <coughs> I did that math. Like how many are we in school? We are around a thousand. <laughs> so how about I bring out CDs and start selling to these guys? So that's how I did my first mixtape. Well, well, hold, hold it right there, David. <laughs> You just estimated the, the number of students that you are, yeah. then you produce DVD CDs. Yeah, I went and did a mixtape. It was a five tracks mixtape uh -huh. called the Sia Zamja. I was just expressing myself. And everyone bought? Actually, I sold the CD for like two years. I made more than that, but now I just tried to just get a Compressed. figure for it, yeah. Wow, let's talk about before, before you even quit the music industry and the like and release several singles and collabs with big artists, uh -huh. which you have done, yeah, it's some of some of the big names you have done. Uh, the highlight I uh, did uh, there's a there's a song called "Peace of Mind" that I did with Calligraph Jones. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I also did one with La Bala. Yeah. Now the question comes in: Why work with big names? Mm -hmm get it all done for you, I believe it was earning something, mm -hmm. and then decide to quit, just to venture into artist management? Okay, uh, just that, uh, as I've said before, for me, doing music, the reception I got was really well. Like even some of the media personalities, mm -hmm. up to date, I told them I'm not doing music, they still don't believe it. Up to date, they're like, you know one day you just go back to music. There are lots of them. So. Okay, it was just a personal decision. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was telling you, uh, be, be, be offset, that uh, many a times we do things that we are not happy with from within. Mm -hmm. But we do it because it pays our bills or it gives us some level of fame and stuff. Mm -hmm. So for me, I didn't want to do something and <coughs> just keep on struggling with it when it's not making me happy. So it reached a point, actually I had an unreleased album. Mm -hmm full album but i never released and i just put trashed it so it reached a level i just decided i'm not going to <coughs> continue being the artist but i'm going to be behind artists and make artists what, what gap did you see because I, i'm trying to juggle my mind around the aspect you know you have been making money mm -hmm. from this side and he talks about its passion mm -hmm. that made you to quit mm -hmm. What gap did you see in terms of you know artist management because i believe something that was there even back then Okay, one thing, one thing I can tell you is that as an artist, I went through the normal struggles that ev each and every artist goes through. Which is, uh, as an artist in Kenya, I'd say artists are going through the toughest careers. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Because one, you can't do it alone. So you need a team. And you see, before you start needing a team, you need to be making some money. And you know, in the initial stages of your career, you're not making anything. So it's really crazy. So... Mm -hmm. Not having a manager or a, a team behind me to push and support me also was well, some of the reasons that I felt like, okay, I'm not having a team or a manager to actually advise me. See, most artists, you just what you can present is just talent. The business aspect of it, the branding and everything, the planning, all that is handled by a manager. Uh, and we, we will be talking about that because probably someone is watching and they're like, by them, a musician. What is this branding all about? Probably and that is key. Mm -hmm. uh, so having struggled with getting a manager or a team, I sat down and asked myself, how many artists could be going through the same? Mm -hmm. There's so many. And in Kenya, I can tell you for free, I'm probably the only person who actually went and studied it, that talent management and development. Wow. It's not a course being offered anywhere in, within Kenya. It was so, an online one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So having done it, now I decided, okay, I did not just... Uh, wake up one day and start, decided to do it. Mm -hmm. I went off first like two years. I took a break of two years. Then just to get my mind together and because I didn't want to just rush into anything. So I took a two years break. Then after that is then I, I, I started studying and doing a lot of research out there. Then started also networking with the media because you can't also say you're a manager, or you're a publicist, all that when you don't have your connects right. All right. Yeah, yeah, so I started networking and uh, studying then. After now I felt, okay, I'm good to go. I started uh, scouting for talent mm -hmm. and uh, I got my first artist that I started pushing. And uh, yeah, that's how I picked it up. Yes, we will be talking about that, especially about Nadia Mukami. Uh -huh. We'll be coming to that. But let's now narrow it down even now to the, the entertainment company that you have. What is it all about? What package is there that you can tell us? Okay, uh, Hellmind Entertainment Company, it, it's a registered company in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's Hellmind Entertainment Company Limited. It's a recording studio. Actually, uh, the, 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 the 
profile I would give it, it's actually an entertainment and creative company. Mm -hmm. So what we deal with, we have a recording studio where artists can come and record. Mm -hmm. We also have a, we are, we say next week we are setting up a photography kit where we love photography. Yeah. We also do artist management and development. And uh, we also do music distribution. We do mis distribution to all stores worldwide. If you're looking to get your music on iTunes, Spotify, all, Skiza, all that, we do that. Uh, uh, before I even ask my next question, is it some sort of trying to venture into some business field? Because some people feel like this thing is not just another business. It's a business. It's a business. Yeah, it's a business. We can put that on record. It's a business. It's a business. Oh, for me, uh -huh. uh, it's just that in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, looking back in history, when you look at how we perceive music or entertainment, it's something that you do as a by the way. Right. That's why most of our parents have not embraced music or entertainment as a career. Mm -hmm. That's why if you, you're doing music, your parent will ask you what else. Right. So they, they always make it look like music is a side hustle. So you should have a main hustle. But I can tell you for free, guys out here are living off music. So people are really living because Not of just music. living, living mm -hmm. large. Wow. All right. I love that. <laughs> living large. And here I am, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to venture into music. Hey. Okay. All right. Um, Hailman is all about that. You talk, I, I saw from your bio, PR, public relations. Yeah, really and touches and you publicity. Obviously. Yeah, and publicity. Mm -hmm. Actually, I work with them. I, I, I even currently I'm working with a number of big names, uh, just trying to push their music out there. L let me t let me ask this: the PR is it about you or rather the persons that you work with? Okay, so an artist approaches me, mm -hmm. then they tell me, hey, "Goro, I have this new project. It could be a music video, or just a, a pro I call it a, I call it a project in totality because it's there's the audio bit mm -hmm. and the video bit. Mm -hmm. So I want to promote this music mm -hmm. to get an audience, an audience in terms of getting hairplay." and booking them for media tours to promote the music. It's just actually a, a, a campaign. All right, you, you mentioned about big names. Yeah. For instance? Hey, there are lots of them. Uh, I've worked with uh, Cindy Sanyu from Uganda. Uh -huh. I've worked with Gulam from France. Uh -huh. I've worked with Christophe. I've worked with Gabu. I've worked with uh, Bahati. As an I've artist worked. manager? No, just uh, no managing artists. Uh, I've always managed. I, I've never wanted to manage any established name. That's one thing. You want to raise. I want to raise. Mm -hmm. I, that's one thing that uh, I've always told myself. I don't want to manage. I've I've been approached with a number of them, but I don't like managing an artist who is established. How, how many PR firm do you work with? I just have one PR firm. Uh -huh. That works. Then okay. Personally, people engage me just to promote their music. If all you right. have a new music out mm -hmm. there that you want me to push on the media, YouTube marketing, I do all that. So your work is I bring you my product. Yeah. You take it and to I get it to the market. It. Yeah, and I get it to the market. All right. Probably someone is watching you and asking, what are some of the things that you look at even presenting my work? Okay. Mm, there are those levels. Uh, and also, having been in this for some years, mm -hmm. they also there's a relations there, there's a relation i've created with some media personalities that uh, even you right now we've created a relation like you know me in person mm -hmm. next time i call you and tell you how this artist that i'm working with mm -hmm. and i'd like you to just give them an audience or just listen to their their work there's a way you already perceive me so you don't expect me to bring you poor quality audio poor quality video you get it mm -hmm. so there's some level and you see not just uh, the artist mm -hmm. but you can also see the market itself mm -hmm. the, the artist out there and even in kenya right now guys are now stepping up mm -hmm. in terms of doing high quality music videos and stuff so you can't go below wow you just have to step up because okay that's the only way mm -hmm. you guys are going to give you an audience that's amazing i'm loving what you do uh -huh. i'm really loving what you do and it's a big gap uh, let's talk about what you mentioned earlier on about uh, artist management about branding and all that mm -hmm. What is it in full measure, in contact? Mm -hmm. What is it all about? Artist management, uh, mostly uh, as an artist, mm -hmm. you're just a creative. Mm -hmm. You just think. And when you, the, you realize in developed countries like uh, in the US, they tap that and start nurturing that talent from a tender age. That's why if you're a footballer, your mom will take you to a football academy at a tender age so that by the time you're 15 you're a professional footballer so you just uh, okay the the artist management is now 
the business aspect of the talent. Okay, I can sing. Anyone can sing. Right. You also sing yeah, in your shower. <laughs> yeah. It's just that you've not gone to a studio. <laughs> so the difference between you and a professional artist uh -huh. is that a professional artist makes money off it. All right. So then how then do you make money? You make money mm -hmm. by first knowing that you are a business. You know, most artists right. do music and they think it's a hobby. It's business. Mm -hmm. When you start doing music as a business, you start looking at things differently. So as an artist manager, when I look at an, an artist, I first listen to their music. Then I picture which audience relates to that. Because I can't bring you Public rumba music. Public comes in. Yeah. All right. Which, because I can't pr bring mm -hmm. a rap song to a rumba audience. Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm -hmm. So I need first to picture which audience f best fits this music. Then, what are the trends in that market? Like right now, uh, there's this gangeton vibe that everyone is vibing to. Mm -hmm. I know there are a number of artists trying to jump on it. So, right now, those guys are making money. But you see, there are, they, they, there's an artist out there who has pictured, okay, my audience is uh, Afropop. So, I need to now do a lot of research on Afropop. Mm -hmm. It's just like bringing uh, a product into the market. You need to know, okay, who are your competition? How is the market? You do, you do some research. market research. Because mm -hmm. if I were to set up a business next to a business, I need to know what that business is not doing well that I need to improve on, or what that business that hasn't introduced that I need to introduce. You just need to have an edge in all ways so that you stand out. Because, okay, fans of Calligraph Jones mm -hmm. will not switch their mind to something else if it's not better than Calligraph. That's it. Wow. All right. Guys, that's the voice of none other than David Guaro himself. They know the CEO of Hailmind is giving us some good and insightful thing about music and business, or rather music business in general. It's all about talking about matters related to your music. You've got a passion, well, you can get in touch with him. And of course, you can keep interacting with us on our social media platforms. At Y254, that is on Facebook. On Twitter, we are at Y254 channel. You can, of course, even interact with me. It's K underscore Alex. Guaro, let's talk about, you've mentioned about standing out when others are blending in in terms of their passion yeah. and what they love because you quit rapping and decided to venture into something different. Yeah. How best can you stand out? Because we're looking at the music industry, it's really flocked. Yeah. How and best can you stand out? Standing out is just having the right team behind you. Right team behind Right team behind in terms of, you, 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 you don't need just a team, you need a team of serial strategists. Right. People who look at you and try to Okay, we, we try to manipulate in, in terms of business. Mm -hmm. You get it? Like I look at you and I look at the market, then I try bring you in a way, package you in a way, present you in a way that people are going to switch their, their, their focus from the rest of the artists to you. All now right. you need that kind of a team. Mm -hmm. How do you get that kind of a team? Mm -hmm. That team, if you're starting out, that team could be your best friend, that team could be your brother, that team could be your sister because you're not making money. Mm -hmm. Most s successful artists are actually managed by, like Banner Boy is managed by the mom. Wow, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Celine Dion was being managed by the husband. Mm -hmm. And you see, they didn't marry. Uh, they started out as just purely business and they ended up getting married. So, cause uh, this is what, why I say like sometimes you need the, f f the first people you need in your business mm -hmm. are people who know you. Because artist management, what people don't know, artist management is more like marriage. It's marriage. Because when I'm managing an artist, <laughs> I'm loving this. Uh -huh. when I'm managing an artist, how they feel affect my business. Do you know that if I'm, man like more, people know me for managing most females. If a, if a female artist that I'm managing has a problem with the, the, the boyfriend, she'll come to the studio moody. That will affect my business. I won't get a good, good music that I want. can even record a song from it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Get it. So it mm -hmm. affects my business. Wow. Th th so I nice. need to know mm -hmm. what you're going through as an artist, mm -hmm. and what stage you are in your career. You have worked with several young talents. Mm -hmm. Let me just mention one, Nadia Mukami. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have been with others. Yeah. And all alone, you mentioned about you love nurturing talents other than, you know, going for the people, established persons. Yeah, the reason I don't like wo working with established artists is because, one, they come with a lot of ego and know it all. So wow. I've mm -hmm. never wanted to to and also I, I wouldn't want to work with someone who one day will f uh, they'll start 
feeling like uh, they helped me. I've always wanted to just nurture and get something new into the market. I've never wanted to ride on someone's shine. And Nadi is really doing nice. Yeah, Nadi is doing great. Mm -hmm. Nadi is doing great. I'm, and, uh, I'm very, really, really proud of her. Mm -hmm. She's doing great and she's going places. That one you can tell. You. Just give us some of the things that probably you feel by now are some of the things that are really outstanding from her. <laughs> With Nadia, like, uh, you know, starting out, there, there are times, even she, she knows, like, there are times we could walk in the streets of Nairobi and no one even cared about us. Then with the time, she had to not even get into a matatu, not even come to town in the first place. So there's that growth. Mm -hmm. So right now, I would say she's, she's just outstanding. She's one of the biggest female artists, I would say, right now, because looking at her, I don't see any competition that she has. Is music about fame? Fame is just part of it. Publicity. Okay, so you can't put out a music and no one talks about it. If it's not being talked about, then you're not big. What is being big? Being big is just being on everyone's mouth and being <laughs> on every screen, <laughs> being on every paper. Yeah. That, that's if music guys are not talking you. about you in the neighborhood, uh -huh. Mama Mboga is not talking about you. Uh -huh. And the TVs are not playing you. And you're not getting bookings and uh, uh, for shows and everything. How uh -huh. big are you then? All right, we only know you as, a, as you and we a producer, Kando. Exactly. <laughs> so now that's hey. when you need now a team to ensure that you are all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, Nadia, Nadia, how did you begin for her? How, how did you go and get her? First thing people don't know is, uh, I remember it was on a Friday, 2017, late 2017. Uh, I was just chilling at home. Then uh, I received a WhatsApp message. Mm. Nadia had sent me a WhatsApp message. She told me, hi, Gora, I would like to send you something. Then I'm like, uh, I don't like ignoring people by the way. If you send me anything on WhatsApp, I'll just open and check it out. So I told her, okay, send me an email. She sent it. Do you know what Nadia sent me on my email? Not really. She sent me a career plan, what she wanted and where she saw herself. That's what made me work with Nadia. Wow. Really she already good. had a picture of where she wanted to be. Uh -huh. She even had a logo. She even added a name. Do you know that uh, we a had... A brand name? Yeah, we changed oh. Nadia. I changed Nadia's name. Uh -huh. She wasn't called Nadia Mukami. She went with a, some funny name called Nadia Exclusive. And I took her through a process of changing the name. And it was tough. She was like, ah, no, no, no. But I told her, stop thinking like an artist. Start thinking like a manager. So most artists always put right. themselves in the artist's shoe. Which one, as an artist, you always want to all these nice nice names mm -hmm. but now as a manager as a marketer you think of uh, how do i packet this brand and does the name affect the 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 the, the, the image and everything of the, what does that brand represent mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. it uh, so yeah. we changed the name we changed a number of things she even came up with a logo we changed it it, it was all lots of just it was restructuring and everything and from there we started working and so far so good she's out there doing great things uh, a big up nadia i know panangi mat come me we will need to meet up at least nuksele me tota kan kachai to join aje anyway all right uh let me let me get to this you are talking about um, artist management and from what i'm getting it's like you really care about the image which relates so much to public relations you're talking about you know being branded still relates to public re relations uh -huh. is this uh, uh, some sort of a public relation firm that is in target for artists more more like like uh, i would like. say okay music entertainment is all about show and biz that's why it's showbiz mm -hmm. it's showbiz so you have to show then from the show you need to make some money mm -hmm. this is the biz aspect of every show Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm -hmm. So it's all about putting out music, ensuring that that music gets you money. Mm -hmm. It's not just, okay, the artist to just do it. And something else you need to know. Mm -hmm. Not every artist does music for money. The artist to do music for fame. They just uh, want that's to why I had to ask the question between, you know, is it all about fame? Okay, fame is good. But uh -huh. fame is also d very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Very, very dangerous can finish you because mm -hmm. lots of big artists go through a lot of depression that you never hear about mm -hmm. of because they, 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 are, they are denied their their selves like mm -hmm. you can't just interact normally mm -hmm. you can't when you miss the labda you know of our slippers and you cross the road and go take to mamamboga you can't do so you realize you just secluded 
Fame is good, but fame comes with a lot of consequences. All right, I, I'd like us to draw some of the pictures of Nadia and some of the things that she has been doing. That's that's Nadia now, right there. Yeah. You know, from I'd like. I wish we had some pictures from zero all the way. You know, going now to her it's becoming. Okay. It's okay. Mm. All right, I I love these. So t tell us more about her. What, what really really outstands you that asked before. Ileki to kimangele bonga samanga man. She has really walked the journey. Okay, Nadia has an image. You see, mm -hmm. most uh, female artists are always trying to, are, are always struggling with uh, getting an image. Mm -hmm. You see, okay, for females, uh, I wouldn't want to use the word sex sells, mm -hmm. but I would say for a female, the 70% of, of a female fan base is mm -hmm. male. Mm -hmm. Females are not always supported by their, male, their female con counterparts. <laughs> Never. I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. It's always a competition. So, for you to present yourself, mm -hmm. that's why a woman will wake up in the morning, do makeup and all that. They're not doing it for themselves. They're doing it for us men. So, as a female, you always need to picture that also. Hey, ladies, are you doing it for us? We need to put that you together. To, yeah, you, need, you need to picture that. Because first, you picture <laughs> that, uh, okay, this is a man. That's why sometimes you, you go home. You rush home highly to watch news because it's being presented by some female artist, some <laughs> female presenter. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you need to picture that. Okay, my audience is male, so I need to be look sexy and hot. Mm -hmm. And besides that, I also need to present some really dope music that they'll be like, okay, she's hot, but then again, she's also super talented. Do so that's what more like uh -huh. Nadia has all that. All right. Yeah. You can do, do men do the same? Huh? Do men do the same? Yeah, men do the same. That's why some some men would take off t-shirts. Do all those six pack for and women. stuff. It's for women. All right. You can't do that for fellow men. <laughs> <laughs> what for anyway? Exactly. <laughs> all right. Now, uh, you have an event coming up this weekend. Yeah, I have a workshop. Uh, okay, this early this year, I just decided to just branch out and try do more than that, than just doing mm -hmm. talent management and development. So I decided, okay, having interacted with a number of artists out here, mm -hmm. I realized most artists uh, don't know so much about this music business, even the most established ones. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're just there. These, I don't know if it was just luck that they got there, but most of them don't know anything. Mm -hmm. or even most Im most important things. Mm -hmm. So with the lack of knowledge and misinformation in regards to branding, marketing, mm -hmm. PR and all that, and artist management, I decided, uh, how about I just set up a forum or a platform where I can at least uh, have an audience of artists, mm -hmm. or music entrepreneur or ent enthusiasts, just... Uh, have a place where we can discuss and I take them through what it takes to have a successful music career. Mm -hmm. Take them through contracts, take them through copyrights, take them through what publicity, music PR is all about, what actually artist management means. Because I get artists calling me that they want me to manage them. Then I, I, I ask them a simple question. What do you understand by artist management? Unanilipia studio, unanilipia video, unanilipia kila kitu. That's what artists understand. Artists don't understand, artist management is more like, uh, let's say for example, now this is a simple understanding of mm -hmm. artist management. Mm -hmm. You have a company today, but you're busy running other things. You're just an investor. You've set up a business. So you have to look for a manager, right? Yes, right. It, manager is probably on a payroll. So, no. so what's the work of the manager? Mm -hmm. The manager, you, you as an investor or an interpreter, Preneur, you pictured an idea mm -hmm. or a business opportunity. Then you're like, ah, let me set it up. For you to set it up, for you to, it to grow, you need, you need people behind it. You look for a manager who is going to manage all the wow. things. Mm -hmm. So the manager, his core work is just to ensure that the objective, the vision you had, mm -hmm. is achieved. All right. Because of time, unfortunately, David, you need to tell us where the event will be. How much is it? So actually, I'll be having an event on this Saturday mm -hmm. uh, in Nairobi, 5th? Uh, October fifth, this Saturday in Nairobi, where it's a workshop where I'll be ta I'll be just uh, training and uh, uh, taking artists through how to start, run, and grow a successful music career. Mm -hmm. So artists need to be there. Mm -hmm. You need to get your tickets. Actually, we have very few tickets remaining at the moment. So guys can follow me, David Goro or Hellmind Entertainment, mm -hmm. for or to just get to know how to get their tickets and stuff. All right. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing thing because I've really prepared. I've never had sleepless nights trying to just gather in lots and info, doing research and to gather information about music entertainment. Okay, now finally, we usually, every Tuesday we usually have this question mm -hmm. that we usually ask. Mm -hmm. 
I know you probably in one in one conversation you tried to answer it, but yeah. I said I'll ask you the tail end. Okay. In the next five years, where do you see yourself? For me, I see myself as a one of those as a mu great music mogul. A guru. Yeah. Wow. All right. Give us a parting shot to Malaysia Keto. My parting shot is just to tell guys, first uh, I have two. One is in regards to my event. Artist and everyone needs to get your tickets. Follow me on David Goro at David Goro on all platforms and get your ticket. It's uh, it's not good. I always say this like uh, if you keep on doing things the same way, then you don't expect a different result. So come learn and start mm -hmm. doing things differently in order to get a different result. And lastly, mm -hmm. music is business. It's not a hobby. I wanted to look at this this, this, camera. this camera. Yes. So to all parents out there. Let your, artist, let, let your child do music. Music is a business. Just try and nurture it and uh, be there. Artists need support because sometimes these are matters of creativity. Mm -hmm. They can't be creative if they, they have all this rebellion and uh, resistance all around them. So they just need positive energy and positive vibe around them. Nurture them and next time they'll just be giving you a key to your house. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's the voice of David yeah. Guaro. What really outstanding for me in his parting shot is very straight. Support your children, nurture character and creativity. And they're going to be great and awarding back. Whatever goes around, comes around. That's none other than David. Many thanks for making it. We appreciate you being here. You can, of course, interact with him on as he should in his platforms. Well, very much is coming up next. This is Entrepreneurship Tuesday. My name is Karanja Alex. Keep it Y254. Thanks, Anna, for coming back.